Long before the well-trodden paths of Columbus or Viking longboats reached the Americas from Europe, a much older and more enigmatic migration unfolded, one that rewrites the story of humanity's spread across the globe. Ancient migrations to the Americas reveal a unique and curious mystery that has intrigued scientists, geneticists, and historians alike. When modern humans first emerged, their spread across the globe was a slow and arduous process. Migration into Europe and Asia involved tens of thousands of years of adaptation to unfamiliar environments, but something extraordinary happened when modern humans reached the New World. In a span of mere millennia, modern humans expanded from the icy reaches of Alaska to the windswept plains of Patagonia, establishing thriving populations across 10,000 miles of diverse ecosystems. Could it be that humanity's journey across the Americas was accelerated by something beyond our current knowledge of human migrations? What role, if any, might even earlier human explorers have played in this unprecedented and lightning-fast expansion? Join us as we explore the mysteries of humanity's rapid colonization of the Americas, asking the bold questions mainstream science does not. So, um, why did humans expand so rapidly through the Americas, a landmass equally vast and ecologically diverse? Archaeologists have long attributed this to factors such as favorable environmental conditions or an abundance of prey species like mammoths. But could these factors alone account for a human migration so rapid it has been described as explosive? Some researchers argue that we are missing a crucial piece of the puzzle. Theories proposing lost ancient technology may offer answers where conventional explanations fall short. Compared to the cautious pace of migration across Eurasia, this ludicrously rapid conquest of the Americas defies conventional explanation. Once humans got past the ice sheets into central and southern North America, they expanded all the way from Texas to Patagonia in only 1,000 years. The only plausible explanation for why Native Americans were able to rapidly expand through the Americas, whereas modern humans took at least 50,000 years to reach Western Europe and Central Asia, is that in Europe and Asia they faced determined resistance each step of the way. Without other humans to slow them down, Native Americans were able to move rapidly through plains, deserts, tropical rainforests to the tip of South America in only about 30 generations. Recent archaeological evidence and genetic research suggest a surprising possibility. Humans entering the Americas may have encountered small, isolated populations of Denisovans, our long-lost relatives, who had adapted to survive in the icy wilderness of North America. These cold-adapted hominins, possibly remnants of the ancient Denisovan population that once roamed Siberia and East Asia, could have acted as guides, sharing their survival knowledge, navigation skills, and other expertise. Could the presence of these enigmatic hominins explain the unprecedented speed of humanity's expansion across the Americas? For much of human history, migration was a gradual process. After modern humans emerged roughly 100,000 years ago, it took tens of thousands of years for them to expand into Eurasia. This slow spread was shaped by environmental challenges, competition with other hominins, and the difficulty of adapting to new ecosystems. In Europe, modern humans lived alongside Neanderthals for millennia, learning from and interbreeding with them before Neanderthals eventually disappeared around 40,000 years ago. The Denisovans, a sister group to the Neanderthals, remained even more elusive. Their traces are found in the high-altitude genes of modern Tibetans and the genetic legacy of Pacific Islanders, yet few physical remains of Denisovans have been uncovered. They are known primarily from Siberia's Denisova Cave, where they thrived in harsh, cold environments for hundreds of thousands of years. Did modern humans also coexist with these ancient humans in the Americas, just as we did in Europe? Could small, isolated groups of Denisovans have survived longer than we thought, retreating into the icy wilderness of North America, where they adapted to a new way of life? If so, these ancient humans may have played a pivotal role in shaping the migration of modern humans into the Americas. The first modern humans are believed to have entered the Americas between 15,000 and 30,000 years ago, crossing from Siberia into Alaska via the Bering Land Bridge. But the story becomes more complex when considering the remarkable speed of their expansion southward. Sites like Monte Verde in Chile, dated to nearly 18,500 years ago, suggest that humans reached South America far earlier than previously thought. 
How did they cover such vast distances, moving through glaciers, mountain ranges, and dense forests in such a short time? The traditional explanation of um, gradual migration along the ice-free corridor through North America no longer fits this timeline. Instead, growing evidence suggests that the first Americans followed a coastal route along the Pacific Rim, a journey that would have required advanced survival knowledge and maritime technology. Could these skills have been enhanced by interactions with a small, cold-adapted population of Denisovans already living there? Indeed, Denisovans were remarkably well-suited to cold climates. Genetic adaptations identified in modern populations, including the Inuit, suggest that Denisovans passed on traits for high-altitude and cold-weather survival. These adaptations would have made them ideal candidates for thriving in Beringia and North America during the last glacial maximum. If small groups of Denisovans survived into the late Ice Age 25,000 years ago, they may have occupied niches along the Pacific coast of Alaska and Canada, subsisting on marine resources like fish, seals and seaweed. These Denisovans, with their deep knowledge of cold climate survival, could have been critical allies to the first modern humans entering the Americas. They may have shared essential survival skills. As matter of fact, one of the most compelling theories about the rapid spread of humans across the Americas is the coastal highway hypothesis, which suggests that early humans followed a rich corridor of marine resources along the Pacific coastline. This route would have been particularly advantageous during the last ice age, as kelp forests provided abundant food sources and relatively stable ecosystems. But moving along the coast would have required boats, a technology rarely discussed in the context of early human migration. While no direct evidence of Denisovan boat building exists, their survival in coastal and riverine environments in Southeast Asia hints at a potential familiarity with waterways. If they developed simple boats to fish or cross rivers, they could have taught these skills to modern humans, allowing them to leapfrog across the coastline far more quickly than traveling on foot. The ancestors of the ancient South Americans, such as the Lagoa Santa people of Brazil, may have reached the Americas as far back as 30,000 years ago, challenging the long-standing timeline of migration across the Bering Land Bridge and into the New World. This journey, spanning oceans, glaciers and millennia, reveals a complex web of resilience, adaptability and ingenuity that shaped the earliest inhabitants of South America. Recent archaeological discoveries and genetic research have uncovered evidence suggesting that these ancient travelers may have followed less conventional routes, including coastal pathways, open seas, and large rivers cutting deep into the Americas. What drove these early humans across daunting landscapes and treacherous waters to the southernmost parts of the New World? And how did they manage to reach South America thousands of years before traditional migration theories suggest? For much of the 20th century, the dominant theory of human migration to the Americas was straightforward. Sometime around 15,000 years ago, during the last ice age, small bands of hunter-gatherers crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia to Alaska. These groups then gradually spread southward through a so-called ice-free corridor in North America as glaciers receded, populating the rest of the Americas. However, discoveries in South America of human occupation dating back as far as 30,000 years throw a monkey wrench into this traditional narrative. If people were already thriving in South America long before the Ice Age ended, how did they get there? These findings demand an alternative understanding of migration routes, challenging the idea that humans entered the Americas solely through the Bering Land Bridge. Evidence from other regions, such as the migration to Australia some 65,000 years ago, proves that early humans were capable of open sea navigation long before the last ice age. It's plausible that similar skills allowed migrants to island hop or follow coastal routes from East Asia along the Pacific Rim and the Aleutian Islands and into the Americas. This coastal route could explain how humans reached South America so quickly during warmer periods. The abundance of resources along the coastline may have facilitated rapid dispersal, allowing small groups to move southward without the need to adapt to harsh inland conditions or glacial barriers. Archaeological evidence from sites such as Monte Verde in Chile supports this theory. Monte Verde's early settlement, complete with tools, hearths and plant remains, suggests that humans were already living in South America thousands of years before the ice-free corridor in North America would have been passable. This raises a baffling question. 
How did these early humans traverse thousands of miles of challenging terrain, including glaciers, mountains, and dense forests in such a short time? By 15,000 years ago, humans had reached the southernmost tip of South America, populating Patagonia and beyond. This rapid expansion, spanning the length of the Americas in just a few millennia, is unparalleled in human history. If cold-adapted Denisovans were already established along the Pacific Rim, their presence might explain this extraordinary feat. As we discussed, these Denisovan groups could have acted as guides, offering crucial survival strategies and technological insights that enabled modern humans to move swiftly and efficiently through unfamiliar landscapes. This scenario would mirror the interactions between Neanderthals and modern humans in Europe, where the exchange of tools, techniques and genes shaped the trajectory of human evolution. Modern genetic studies offer tantalizing hints of Denisovan influence in the Americas, while the direct Denisovan contribution to indigenous American populations is minimal compared to their influence in Asia and Oceania, subtle traces of Denisovan DNA could indicate deeper connections. Certain genetic markers in Amazonian indigenous groups suggest a connection to ancient populations with Australasian ancestry, hinting at complex migration routes and potential interactions with Denisovans along the way, these genetic traces point to a more intricate story of migration and interaction than previously imagined. As humans moved southward into Central and South America, they adapted to tropical environments with remarkable speed. Archaeological sites like Lagoa Santa in Brazil and Monte Verde in Chile reveal early populations thriving in tropical rainforests and temperate wetlands within just a few millennia of their arrival in North America. Could the survival strategies taught by Denisovans have helped these early South Americans navigate such diverse and challenging ecosystems? From advanced fishing techniques to the construction of shelters and boats using local materials, the Denisovans' deep knowledge of their environment may have been passed down through cultural transmission, leaving a subtle but enduring legacy in the Americas. The story of humanity's migration into the Americas is far more complex than a simple crossing of the Bering Land Bridge. The ludicrously rapid expansion of modern humans across two continents suggests not just resilience and ingenuity, but perhaps the influence of an older, wiser population that had already mastered survival in these harsh environments. The idea that Denisovans might have survived in small, isolated populations along the Pacific Rim opens up exciting new possibilities for understanding human history. These ancient humans, thought to have vanished entirely, may have played a crucial role in shaping the trajectory of modern humanity in the New World. As we continue to uncover archaeological and genetic evidence, the story of Denisovans and their potential partnership with early Americans offers a humbling reminder of our shared history, a history shaped not by warfare, but by cooperation and the exchange of knowledge across time and species. A final note. Arguing that Native Americans don't have any more claim to be native to the Americas than other populations is as illogical as claiming that Native Europeans don't have a right to Europe. This reasoning fails to consider the unique relationship indigenous people have with their lands based on thousands of years of uninterrupted presence, stewardship, and cultural connection. Stating that Native Americans aren't native because their ancestors migrated to the Americas is an illogical argument. Ancient migration patterns are part of human history, and virtually every population has moved and settled across different regions over time. What matters is the depth of connection, continuity, and cultural relationship that Native Americans have to their lands. When people question Native American rights to their lands on the basis of ancient migration, they apply a double standard that would never be accepted in Europe or elsewhere. European nations uphold cultural heritage, language and ancestral rights with pride, and indigenous American rights deserve the same respect. Native Americans have profound, continuous and culturally specific connections to their lands that go far beyond the simplistic idea of first arrival.